Throughout this webinar, we're probably going to focus our demos primarily around the DCS. Now that's because if a finger mark is challenging, we're going to need the best of the best to be able to photograph this. So the DCS itself is made up of specialist lighting attachments, a high resolution camera, and specially designed fingerprint enhancement software that all work together cohesively to mean that we are able to photograph any fingerprint on any background. And that really is why we use the DCS-5 when it comes to challenging finger marks. That's what all of us go straight to. So throughout these demonstrations, myself and Laura are going to hopefully show a couple of um, really useful tips and tricks. So either if you have a DCS, you might be able to use some techniques now that you hadn't maybe thought of before, or what we might be able to do is introduce you to some brand new techniques that you have never heard of or never seen before as well. What we're gonna take a look at now is a couple of surfaces that in isolation may well not seem that challenging and a couple of fingerprints that again, in isolation may not seem that challenging. But what we'll do is talk about how we could potentially make that photography a little bit more streamlined and a little bit faster. So in general, after treatment with cyanoacrylate, most labs, the majority of laboratories, are still going to use a dye stain um, after cyanoacrylate treatment. So the purpose of that is to make the fingerprints easier to photograph mostly. So what will happen is the cyanoacrylate will absorb that dye stain and hopefully the background won't absorb that. So that means that we don't have to play around with angles and lighting quite so much. We know that, for example, if we used uh, basic yellow 40 as our dye stain, that we're always going to use a blue light to photograph that. It makes it much easier and much more repeatable to photograph those fingerprints. But there's a couple of scenarios where those dye stains may well not help us. They might actually hinder us. So one such scenario, and the one that we will start by looking at, is fingerprints on a slightly porous or semi-porous background that may well absorb some of that dye stain. So normally, as I explained, what we're hoping for from our dye stain is that it makes the fingerprint fluorescent without making the background fluorescent so that it's easier to photograph. But if our background is a little bit porous, what can happen is that the dye stain can actually sink into the background as well and be absorbed by the background as well. That means that when we come to do our fluorescence photography, our background is fluorescing at exactly the same wavelength as the fingerprint. They can actually mask the fingerprint and make it much more difficult to see. So what we can do is actually sometimes miss out that dye staining part of the process completely. The first example we're going to look at is some finger marks on a small plastic bag. Now, the white parts of this bag, actually, when we use a dye stain like basic yellow, they can absorb quite a lot of that and cause that problem with the background fluorescing. So, we're actually gonna skip out that dye stain completely. We're going to use a technique that we speak about a lot at Foster and Freeman, and we speak about a lot in our webinars, but that's because we think it can be incredibly effective for our customer base. So we're going to use reflected UV, reflected long wave UV to photograph these fingerprints. So the first thing I have done is made sure that the quartz lens is attached to the DCS and I'm going to swap my visible filter stack for a UV bandpass filter. So all this does is it means that instead of transmitting the visible part of the spectrum, the lens and the filter will only transmit the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. So we're viewing all of those interactions in the UV part of the spectrum rather than the visible. So the final thing I need for this, and I need to make sure I have, is an 82S UV. So I'm going to use this as my light source and I'm going to move it around and angle it so that I can view the fingerprints on the live feed of the DCS. So what we will see on the screen will actually look quite different to what we will see on the physical sample. 
So, visibly, we do not see the same result as what we are seeing reflected in the live feed from the camera. So visibly, all we see is quite bright UV fluorescence from the surface. However, I capture a preview. We can now quite easily see the ridge detail on this surface. So what's happening is that the cyanoacrylate is actually scattering quite a lot of the UV light. So it's a lot of those ridges are appearing lighter than the background. The background is absorbing the UV light. What we can see now and what we've actually managed to achieve is to see those fingerprints um, and the ridge detail more likely to see the ridge detail running over the top of those white stripes that are present on the surface of this small plastic bag. It makes it much easier to see the fingerprints on this surface and we haven't had to wait for a dye stain to dry. So if I now just change the lens that I'm using in the software and capture that image through to the enhancement screen, we can do a couple of really nice and simple enhancements to this image. So the first thing I am going to do is convert this image to grayscale. And if we look at this area of ridge detail here, primarily, and this one here as well, I'm going to, ooh. So this is quite a tricky one actually, because this area of ridge detail that we see here is actually already dark, whereas this area here which is actually the part I'm going to concentrate on. We can see a couple of pores throughout this area here. Um, this area would need to be inverted to give us nice dark ridges on a lighter background. So then we could maybe use our area of interest tool and come to superglue. So the superglue tab and see if we like the effect from something like Enhance. Um, sometimes that can be, it can be a bit much because obviously we can see quite good contrast in this mark already. So I actually prefer applying that enhancement across the whole image. So what's really important to understand with DCS is when we do something in a small area of interest, the effect might be really, really different to when we apply it across the whole image. So sometimes if you don't like the effect across the whole image, it's worth applying it on an area of interest and vice versa, actually. So then we can output that image into our network location, um, ready for somebody else to view and look at. The technique we're going to take a look at now is called extended depth of field. So there's a couple of different places where this can be really, really useful when you're photographing fingerprints, particularly difficult fingerprints. So the general guidance that we always hear within a forensic lab is that if you can see a fingerprint, it has to be photographed prior to treatment and then photographed again post-treatment. So where extended depth of field can be really, really helpful is for fingerprints where Maybe we can tilt the item or the object um, at a certain angle and visibly we can see the fingerprint. It's that kind of fingerprint that can be really, really tricky to actually photograph. Especially when, like we're looking at here, it's on something curved. So what we're looking at is a bottle. Now, the problem we have here is that we can only light from specific angles to be able to see the fingerprint on this surface. So what we're going to use extended depth of field for is to take several pictures of this piece of evidence. And then the software is going to use an algorithm to kind of stitch those images together to give us an image of the whole fingerprint across the surface. Step one is to position the item under the camera and get it into focus. So this can take a little bit of time 
But what we're going to do is recreate that tilting effect underneath the camera. So hopefully what you can see is that I've angled the bottle slightly. Now what I'm going to do is move the camera up and down until the image is in focus and move my lighting so that I'm creating that reflection on the surface that's showing the fingerprint. So now we're looking at the uh, piece of evidence in live mode underneath the camera. So as I move the light across the surface, you can see I'm actually only able to illuminate a partial, a partial part of that fingerprint. So if I start around here, what I'm going to do is incrementally, I'm going to start at one end of the fingerprint and then capture images moving across the print until I have an image of the whole fingerprint. Once all of the images necessary have been captured, so once um, you believe you have images of every single part of the fingerprint being illuminated, we then leave the final image that's been captured open and come to enhancement and come down to just here where it says extended depth of field. So what we're now going to do is select all of the images apart from the one that is already open and these are what our image will be created from. So I've selected the other five inches and we can see that just here we have a few different options for how these images can be combined. So if I press this preview button, we can see that what we're seeing now on screen is an image of the whole fingerprint being illuminated all at the same time, which is something that we actually optically, just using light, is very difficult to accomplish. So we've effectively illuminated the whole fingerprint and combined those images. Okay, so let's look at some of the most challenging samples that you can come across. Me and Clipso often do a lot of training all across the world. And one of the samples which consistently comes up is banknotes and currency. And how do we photograph finger marks with lots of different treatment types on banknotes? Now with DCS, we can employ a number of different methods to photograph fingerprints on banknotes. This could be either using lighting techniques, either with the camera, or we could even do this sometimes with the software to remove difficult backgrounds. So here I have a selection of different banknotes from around the world. One of the things I'll first show you is why are banknotes difficult in the first place? Well, first of all, it can be something as simple as the colors that are used, the patterns that are used, but you'll also have hidden security features. So for example, if you're using a treatment type, which may be fluoresces, what you may also find on the banknote as well is you have security features that fluoresce along the same wavelengths actually as your treatments. So if you were to have fingerprints in these areas, it may then be very, very tricky to photograph the fingerprints because of that background fluorescence. 
Sometimes there's only a few small security features and it may be okay in the areas where if your fingerprint is not over those security features, but it is a consideration we actually have to make. So sometimes the methods that you use on other more simple sample types are not going to work as well on these more challenging samples. So let's have a look at a couple of different ways that we can either use lighting or the software to help us to visualize these fingerprints. So let's first have a look at some different lighting techniques that we can use. Now, quite often we have security features in banknotes, which are to our advantage from photographing finger marks. Pretty much every banknote on the planet will have some form of infrared security feature where parts or you know, huge parts on both sides of the banknote could drop out under the infrared. When you hear myself or Calypso talking about something dropping out, what we mean is it disappears or it fades and becomes less visible. Now, the way that we can then employ this on DCS is we can use infrared light to drop out these backgrounds to make the fingerprint more visible. Now, this only works with certain fingerprint treatments. So if you ever want to use infrared, one of the things I will say to you is don't try and use or photograph ninhydrin finger marks under infrared because actually ninhydrin disappears under infrared. So for the examples I have here, in this example, we have a five euro note and I actually have powdered with black fingerprint powder, just a black kind of um, granular fingerprint powder over the areas of the map and on the aqueduct on the top of the banknote. And all we're simply going to do is we will place our banknote under our infrared light source. And what you actually see on the screen is all of that pattern has disappeared. We might have some uh, security feature here in the banknote where we can see the five and the euro marks. There's also a serial number as well. But actually in the areas where the fingerprint is visible, that area of the pattern has disappeared. Now, the way this is working is actually with those dark fingerprint types, like dark powders, black powders, those types of fingerprint treatments will actually absorb infrared light. So this is doing the opposite, where if something absorbs infrared light, it actually makes it darker. We just take a preview here. The effect that we're getting is we're actually seeing the background reflecting the infrared and dropping out. But we're then seeing the fingerprint powder absorbing the infrared light and getting darker. And this is a really simple way of building contrast between your fingerprint and the background of something like a bank mill. Then we might just want to do some basic enhancements just to build that contrast back again. And there you get your finger mark. Very simple and easy. But that's not going to work every single time with every single sample. Because what happens if you get a finger mark on something that doesn't drop out? This is where we can actually use special fingerprint powders. But that's not going to work for every single sample type. And particularly with banknotes, the other challenging aspect we have to consider is we have now some countries use polymer banknotes and some use, still use paper banknotes. So things like powders are not always going to be the most useful um, treatment type to use on there. Particularly as well with se sequential processing, powders tend to come last in the process because once you use a powder on a surface, you usually cannot do any other form of treatment after that. Now, if you're not able to use um, powders on your banknotes or maybe you want to try something else first, then we have some other ideas. Now, the first example is actually going to be our FP Natural 2 powder. Now, I am going to say the word powder here, which I know I've just said that powders usually come last in the process. But powders can also be used in another way. So actually, if you have something treated with cyanoacrylate, 
we can powder on top of the cyanoacrylate. And that way, maybe if we want to try something else, we can remove that powder afterwards. FP Natural 2 powder is an infrared fluorescence powder. So it's very similar to what we've done, but it's slightly more special. Now, infrared fluorescence, we're still trying to do that dropping out of the background. But what we're trying to do is we're creating fluorescence inside the infrared part in the spectrum. And because we're creating that infrared fluorescence, we can see the bright fingerprints, but we can also try and remove the background surface. So FP Natural 2 is a very um, simple powder to use, simply applied on top of super glue with a Zephyr brush. You can use a Marabou style brush as well to remove any excess debris on the surface. But then all we're going to do is use, again, simple lighting techniques. So we have our Crime Light 8x4 here and we have our special sharp cut filter that's provided for use with FP Natural 2. Now FP Natural 2, we can illuminate in two different ways. So the first way is simply to illuminate with a red light source. Now when we turn on a red light source, what you get is the fluorescence is inside the infrared part of the spectrum, even though we're still illuminating in the visible. If I just make a few adjustments here. Okay, we'll take a preview image. And here you can see we have lots of nice different finger marks all across the surface. So actually the red can be really, really useful. And if you have really nice, clear finger marks, they can be quite easy to see. However, when you use the red light, we're still not going to get that full background removal that you might see with the infrared reflectance. So there's another way to actually photograph FP Natural 2. And that is actually, we're gonna use the same filter, but we're gonna to switch to an infrared light source. And this is really key to FP Natural Powder because we're illuminating now inside the infrared, but we're also viewing inside the infrared, which means that we're looking at a very small slice of the spectrum, which allows us to cut out the backgrounds. So if I now adjust that slightly, What we'll now see is we'll see those same finger marks, but this time the background has completely dropped out. Just changing simply into grayscale and we'll capture this. So now we're not getting any of those security features fluorescing because they're fluorescing inside the visible, but we're also seeing a lot of those infrared security features dropping out as well. And again, a little bit of maybe just contrast brightness gamma. We can go into our toolbox as well. Maybe just go into our powders. Just give it a nice smooth. And there we go. And there's our nice clear finger marks. Now, so far we've done some quite simple techniques in the software, just a couple of clicks of the button. Sometimes we can have even more challenging samples though, where sometimes we're gonna have the software do part of the work for us, and then it's up to us to do the final part. Here we have a Vietnamese banknote, and it's actually been treated with ninhydrin. Um, so we have that kind of pinky, pinky purple, colour on top of this kind of blue and yellow banknote. So again, I would photograph that with our ring light, with our uh, daylight filter in order so the camera can see all of the colours in the image. And this is kind of what we would get on the screen then, our finger gun. Now, we have a tab here called a regular because this is technically an irregular pattern. 
There's no consistent pattern moving through it. It's made up of lots of different types of patterns and different colors. And here we have our advanced feature. Now, advanced is quite similar, actually, to currency when we start the process. It's going to still do that color channel extraction. So if I now press start, you'll see the DCS works in a very similar way. We have our original image appears in the center, but this time we have six different options around the back. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to grayscale our original image. This then appears in the top left corner. Now, it's not just about color channel extraction with advanced mode, because here we have different examples. Some are already actually quite good. So for example, this one, we have, we see a really nice clear finger mark. That would be great. That would be useful for a lot of fingerprint examiners. They'd be easily be able to identify that finger mark, but we can make it better. And this is the thing. Sometimes you're not always going to get perfect finger marks on your surfaces. Sometimes you're going to get partials. Sometimes you're going to get marks that are smeared. For example, you might not see some of the characteristics, some of the main characteristics you may look for, like the core or the delta. So this is where the advanced background tool can come in useful to help us with those really challenging fingerprints. Now, what we're trying to do with advanced is we're actually going to look at the tones of gray in the image. So we've, we're going to consider the finger mark, but actually the most important aspect that we're looking at here is the background. Now, in our original image, if you look at the etching on the actual uh, bank note itself, you'll see a lot of the detail is now turned to a dark color. What we also have is our fingerprint. And the fingerprint is a dark color as well. Now with the background, what we're going to try and achieve is we're going to try and remove that background. And because the, the background is dark, the way that we can do this is if we actually look for another background from the other images here, that is the opposite, okay? So if we look for a background that is white in color, that's the opposite to black, when we actually blend them together in the software, they'll cancel each other out, which means that they'll disappear. So this is the part that we as the user actually have to think about it. And we actually have to search through our images to find a background that is the opposite color so we can blend them together and make the background disappear. Now we do also have to consider the fingerprint here because if we do the same with the fingerprint, if we look for a fingerprint that is white, we'll actually cancel out the fingerprint and make that disappear, which is not what we want to achieve here. So actually what we want to look for in this example is a fingerprint that is the same color. So really what we're looking for in here is we want a background that is the opposite color and a fingerprint that is the same color. So realistically, the two that we're probably going to look for are either option three, because the fingerprint is dark, but the background is white and therefore the opposite, or option five. Now with option five, I can see more ridge flow running through this area of the uh, etching on the bank mark. So I'm going to pick image five. So a bit like currency, we simply just select that image and they then appear side by side. Now here in our, in an, uh, now here in our enhancement toolbox, we have our blend two images bar together. This is actually really, really simple to use because we're just going to adjust this red. Uh, so now we're going to have a look at our blend two images feature here. This is actually really simple to use. We're going to look for our blue arrow and we're actually just going to simply move this along the bar to adjust. We're going to see the adjustment in our original image. So this is the area of the screen we want to focus on. And what you'll see is as you move this bar along, you will start to see the image change. Now, we're not going to adjust it all the way across to the other side. 
if we adjust it to the 100 mark, all you actually then physically see is the same as what is in your, your uh, image overlay that we've created. So what we're actually looking for is somewhere in the middle, as we move along and adjust, there will be a point where your background completely drops out. So it's probably going to be about here in this image. But actually what you can see is we don't see any black, any white in the background. You might still see the physical etching that's on the bank note itself, but now there's no colours in the background interacting. Now once you're happy with this, you click finish. And there's your sample. We can click reopen again. And if we put them side by side, we have our original banknote on the right with all of the different colours and then our final image on the left with just our fingerprint and no interference from the background. This next sample is very much a training sample, so please bear that in mind. I'm in no way trying to indicate that the fingerprint that we're about to look at is in any way challenging. It is a very, very simple finger mark and we can see the fluorescence incredibly clearly. However, there could be situations where the fingerprint may well not be as good and the fluorescence that's coming from the background may well interfere a little bit more with what we're seeing. So this is more to demonstrate the way we can combine different techniques to get the best results. So what I'm going to do is just quickly take an image of this finger mark using basic yellow. So I've set up the blue light and the filter that I require. And I'm just going to change the exposure slightly and capture that finger mark. So hopefully you're able to see what I mean about how this is a pretty perfect fingerprint. In fact, it's one of my fingerprints and it is perfect. However, if the fingerprint maybe wasn't as clear, the fluorescence that is resulting from the red text in the background could interfere a little bit more with that print. And what it can also do is distract your eye a little bit. So what I'm hoping to demonstrate is just using reflected UV if maybe the results that we're getting from our fluorescence aren't exactly what we want. So if the results that we're getting from our super glue and BY40 aren't giving us maybe the clarity that we want or we've got something like text interfering with our fingerprint. It's not necessarily taking away from the quality of the mark, but it can distract your eye or make the fingerprint a little bit harder to photograph. So I am just going to come back to the live mode and change the filter that is on the camera to that UV filter again. So that, once again, we are able to see this mark. Now, now, when we look at this finger mark, it's just easier to see. And actually, were we to have approached this from a different angle and maybe just used reflected UV, maybe prior to using the dye stain, we probably wouldn't have gone anywhere near that dye stain because we can see the clarity of that finger mark perfectly. And it almost looks like it's sitting on top of the surface. So if I capture that image once again. So if we look at these images side by side, yes, they are both perfect, perfect fingerprints. And anybody would be able to photograph these ones effectively. But I did just want to demonstrate that sometimes you maybe need to think outside the box a little bit. And if one of your tried and true techniques isn't working, on the DCS, there's always a whole host of other techniques that we can try to implement to maybe change the results that we're getting from our tricky fingerprints, or more accurately, 
challenging backgrounds. Now, sometimes, as I mentioned previously, you may not be able to use those certain treatment types on your samples, either because you don't have them or maybe because they come right at the end of your sequential process. Now, there are other ways that we can look at difficult or tricky backgrounds. These types of challenging backgrounds, we can sometimes use different software features to help us to remove the background rather than using light. Now, the first thing I will say with um, this type of technique is we still, we still do have to light them in a specific way in order to get the best marks. Because what we're trying to do with the software is a lot of our more advanced techniques, we're using what we call colour channel extraction. So it's looking at the different combinations of colours within the pixels to pull information out so that we can see the fingerprint but not the background. Now cameras look at colours in different ways. Different cameras will look at different colours in different ways, same with our eyes as well. The way that we interpret colour might be slightly different to a camera. So actually what we try and do in terms of the lighting is we're trying to light so we get nice even illumination across the surface. But what we want to do is we want to try and get the light in as correct as possible so that camera can get, can see the colours in the most accurate way. If the camera can see the accurate colours in your sample, it makes it easier for them to do the colour channel extraction. So for any DCS users who already have um, the system or anyone who's new to the system, we can actually achieve this in a really simple way. Something as simple as your ring light, we can actually use what we call a daylight filter. Okay? Now the daylight filter simply slips on to the end of your ring light. Now where you use daylight illumination, this allows the camera to see the most accurate colours. So it's really important that we have that daylight filter on if we're trying to photograph any sample which has lots of bright colours, tricky or challenging backgrounds with lots of different colours together. And we're simply just going to photograph this in white light with our daylight filter on the sample. Now that's, that can be a really easy thing to do and what we then have is our example here on the screen. Now what we have is our American currency here. And this has actually been treated with ninhydrin. Okay. Um, and this is a paper-based currency that we have here. Now, what we actually have in the software is a tool called currency. Now, we call it currency, but actually it's because we have a special toolbox because currency is usually one of the most challenging samples you may get in a lab to photograph. But actually, you can use the currency toolbox on any sort of tricky, challenging background with lots of different colours, lots of different patterns. So don't feel the need to just use this toolbox just on banknotes. Now, this is a really simple technique. What you end up on the screen is you get five different options. And the options are simply just going to do different colour channel extraction techniques. Now, my favourite thing personally to do is you actually have a show all button which does all five together at the same time. Now, what will happen is the software is going to automatically do this enhancement for us. So we get our five images on the screen. Now, here we can visually look at each sample and we can see where the background has dropped out and it's up to us to then subjectively pick the best sample for us. Now everyone is a bit different depending on the colours. The software may give you a white fingerprint on a dark background but it may also give you a dark fingerprint on a light background. And everyone's a bit different in this industry. We find some people prefer the white fingerprints, some prefer the dark fingerprints. Depending on the colours, you can simply click on the um, invert button and you can adjust each of these images. Okay, 
and then we simply click select image and we will click on the image we want to keep and there now is our fingerprint where we've removed bits of the background but actually now we can even see areas like the delta appearing on the fingerprint that we didn't necessarily see before one of the nifty tools we have in DCS is you do have a reopen tool as well so when you reopen we can put these side by side so you have your original sample here on the right and then your new background removal option on the left and here like for example where the delta is we cannot see that information physically in our original image